Dusty Dvorak joins us in studio. Dusty, good to have you back. Yes. And yes, the NFL Combine wrapped up in Indianapolis this weekend. Maybe the biggest buzz, Florida quarterback Anthony Richardson, a 40.5-inch vertical and a 4-4-3-40. So what stood out to you? Dusty, let's start with you. Well, I'm going to start with the local guys. I think Marvin Mims, more than anybody, helped his cause and helped himself in Indianapolis. He ran unbelievably fast. 4-3-8, which was fantastic for him. We've seen the explosiveness, average over 20 yards a catch, had a 39.5-inch vertical. I don't think he gets past the third round, solidified himself as no later than a day-two pick. I thought Anton Harrison, likely going to be a first-round pick. He'll be the first local guy getting his name called. Him running a 4-9-8, I thought that was excellent. Picking him up, putting him down, looked really good, showed good mobility in his drill work. Long arms as well, I thought that was all great. Jalen Redman. 4-8-1 was excellent. He had short arms, but a lot of good things that he showed. His tape is inconsistent, but he had a great workout, so that's going to help him. Jason Taylor, Oklahoma State, 43-inch no. vertical. That's why the guy was making all those plays, going to get the football. And how about the Tulsa running back, Deneric Prince, 216, 441, top five fastest running backs. Some local guys did well in Indy. No doubt about it, team. Well, I love seeing some of the top draft guys. By the way, that quarterback Richardson weighed 244. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the Sooners, the, the numbers were good for defensive lineman Jalen Redmond. The questions with him are not all the tangible numbers, but some of the intangibles. Dusty mentioned inconsistencies, injuries primarily. Uh, though 291 pounds and running a 481, really, really good. The NFL insiders that I've talked with and some of the things I've read list several issues that they physically didn't see as much at Oklahoma, but he will make it in the NFL. Love Mims running that great 40 time, 438. Only three wide receivers ran better. That's the bottom line. He can do the rest. The projected second, third round pick also good with the vertical and broad jump explosiveness. That's that's the key word, I think. No yeah. doubt about it. All right. On Friday, the Athletic reported that Big 12 Commissioner Brent Yormark has been in contact with four Pac-12 schools, Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah. And that March, by the way, this is March, <laughs> may be a time to strike in terms of further expansion. The Pac-12 struggling on putting together a good TV deal at the moment, Dusty. Never a dull moment with conference <laughs> expansion. Look, Brett Yormark, he is the right guy to run your conference. The Big 12 hit a home run bringing him in. He means business. He ain't messing around. He said from day one at Big 12 Media Days back in July in Arlington of last year, we're looking out west, and he has not wavered. A moment. They're looking out west. The reality is the Pac-12 is struggling to get a legitimate big-time media rights deal put in place. We've known ever since UCLA, USC was leaving Washington and Oregon. It's just out there looming there, Big Ten bound at some point. Talked to a lot of people out west, and there's no good deal. And the Big 12 saying, come on, let's go. <laughs> they want all four time zones. They could bring in these four schools. They would get that. I got to be honest. I think the Pac-12 is dead, fellas. Oh, boy. Yeah, I, I, I'm afraid that it is, too. But just for time's sake, I'll just say that the, I think that what, what I've seen here is that the leader is so important. The, the commissioner, Yormack, that came in, it was a marketing quiz. And initially, I was thinking, ah, too much salesmanship. But I'll be darned. <laughs> that marketing angle is what's really important. Yeah. And so he is just, the, the Big 12 and Pac-12 are about the same. But the Big 12 is in another league. No, no doubt yeah. about it. All right, let's move to the SEC quickly. Talk of four team pods has been out there. Nothing official yet from Commissioner Greg Sankey. However, OU with Texas, Missouri, possibly Florida. Could we call what's out there? Dusty, as in restaurant terms, a soft opening. You just throw it out there, yeah. see what everybody says. Nick Saban doesn't like it. No. How about Nick Saban? Is he ever happy? That guy's always in a bad mood. They're getting a raw deal at Alabama. And I know it's 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 Auburn, it's Tennessee, it's LSU, but chill out, Coach Saban, please. For Oklahoma, <laughs> look, the only thing that I thought was a little interesting, I kind of wanted to see AM back on the schedule every single year. For Oklahoma, you get Texas, Missouri rekindle that old Big Eight and Big 12 rivalry and then it's gonna be florida so oklahoma sooner fans if this holds a little taste of the swamp i like it i thought they did a pretty good job everybody kind of worked its way out but i really thought we'd see a and m on that slate for oklahoma every year yeah they, they take that stuff very seriously so they've looked at all of it uh you know you got to take a big picture view of opponents mentioning saban didn't like tennessee not getting the respect from what he was saying as a 30 year or more perspective it's the same with florida I fully expect Florida to be really good really soon. They ooze with talent that's as good as any 
in the country in the Gators' backyard. So, oh, you getting Florida may look good now, but it may be different soon. If you remember, we suggested, oh, you would get Florida, Texas, and Missouri recently, and that's what it looks like. I still believe Texas is going to get real. I've been saying it for so long. Surely it will happen <laughs> that they're going to get really good, and Missouri, not so sure. I'd like to, love to have seen Arkansas there, though. All right, Dusty, thanks very much. Good to see you. Great to